most people are more afraid of losing their mind than of dying. My name is Gaspar Noe. I just arrived to Colm last night to, to do Q&A for my movie. And uh, my last movie is called Vortex. It's about an old couple suffering from age. The idea of making a movie about an aging couple mostly comes from the fact that uh, I lost my mother eight years ago, but before dying, mm -hmm. she, she had dementia. You know, dementia has many forms. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be Alzheimer's, it can be Parkinson. There are many other similar uh, biological diseases the, the, that have other names. But a um, uh, long time ago, you would just call it senility. Uh, uh, and uh, some, also some people when they're very old, they have non-convulsive epilepsy. And that means your brain is cooking like in, in a volcano, but you, you have no seizures, uh, but still you cannot sleep. And uh, yeah, and you, 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 your whole uh, brain uh, and soul also, because the brain and the soul are the same thing. Um, uh, yeah, okay. it's in, in a total state of decomposition. Um, uh, I, because I saw my mother uh, having dementia before before she died, I, I saw at that moment that there were no movies portraying that state of terror. And simultaneously to, the, to that moment, I, uh, me and my family were going through, uh, Haneke's movie Amour came out and I saw it well, because I, I flew from Buenos Aires to Cannes and I went back to take care a bit of my mother with my father. And uh, I was surprised when I saw it that there were there weren't more movies about this subject because it's a, such a universal subject. In every family, there's someone with, the, with dementia. And it's, uh, it's, but it's a subject that is almost more taboo than incest, rape, etc. because everybody's afraid of losing his mind uh, at the end of his own life. So uh, no one wants to portray those situations because there's um, it was a commercial success, so it opened a very little door for other movies dealing with this same universal subject. And a few years later, you, you have this movie called The Father that came out, and now uh, there is my, my, my movie is coming out. But yeah, uh, I'm surprised to see how many people come to me crying at the end of the movie, saying, well, I'm exactly in the same situation with my parents or with uh, my grandmother. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah. It, it seems that after the age of 80, one person out of three has dementia. The, the, the sentence that Dario Argento says in the movie, uh, life is a dream within a dream, is a sentence, it's a famous quote by Edgar Allan Poe. And um, when we started doing this movie, I told all the actors that I, I wouldn't give them lines, that they, they should invent their dialects and their characters. Uh, so uh, he came with the idea of using that famous quote while, while being filmed. Um, but it, it made a lot of sense uh, in the movie because the, also he plays a film critic who's writing a book about dreams and, how, and the representation in cinema. Like eight years ago, uh, I've been in, in, situ in very similar situations, uh, and there are some some dialogues or scenes in the movie that come from my own experience of uh, dementia with my mother or with my, my grandmother, and uh, the, there is something very very touching about uh, about dementia because, like people who you consider as your masters, you know, your parents suddenly they, they, they turn into lost babies. And really, you, 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 you love them even more because they're needy. Uh, it, it was not the case of my father, who's uh, 88 years old, and he's uh, 
his mind is absolutely perfect and he's painting, writing. Uh, but, but my mother, who was extremely intellectual, suddenly lost control of her mind. And then, uh, yeah, you feel essential to her survival. Uh, The, 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 those moments are very scary for the person who experiences it and very scary also for the people around because you know you, 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 if you are with your dad or your mother and she's, uh, and you go to, you're in a bar and you go to the toilet you come back 15 seconds later and the person had disappeared and then during the whole day you don't know where the fuck in the city they are and then suddenly like oh, six hours later the, uh, your mother or father reappears at your place and say, but where have you been? And they don't even know where they've been and you never know what happened. But uh, every day you have like a weird surprises uh, of that kind. Even for example, the scene with the son who tells his parents they, they should go to, to, to some kind of institution that would take care of them. You could tell that in one way or another, the three characters involved in that scene, no, the, the three actors, had to deal with similar situations because uh, I didn't give them any dialogues and we shot like the scene three times, 20 minutes each and then I kept the last take and I, I reduced it to 12 minutes but everything feels so accurate that it's, oh yeah, they, 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 they've been in similar situations already and the, 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 the guy who plays the son, he wouldn't stop crying between the takes. He said, oh, no, it's a, it's a, yeah. yeah, but uh, no, the, 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 the universal it says time destroys all things, but also time reveals all things. It's, uh, time reveals all things and destroys all things. It, 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 it just depends if you watch backwards or, or you watch forward. Uh, time uh, allows everything that happens and then it destroys it. It's uh, like a, time destroys all things. It's the pessimistic version of time reveals all things. It's just a, it's like a door. Either you're before the door or after the door, but the, the, the door is moving. And, That is not a big issue, that is okay. No, this is a relief in, in some cases. Uh, most people are more afraid of losing their mind than of dying. When you die, you just don't wake up. It's, you know, it's like, it's like you switch on, switch off the light. It's, uh, it's, uh, dying is not an issue. It just, um, it's the opposite of life, but the opposite of life is just non-life. Uh, uh, there is no hell, there is no heaven, no one's gonna torture. Uh, with flames or whatever, not uh, the, 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 the only hell you can go through is the one before your death, which is a dementia. Dementia is terror. You know, it's, a, uh, it's not a funny thing. I will, you know, uh, I'm not obsessed with euthanasia, but the, um, in some cases, people should decide when they get into those uh, like dark places. Uh, they should decide if they want to experience it or if they want to switch the light off and, dis and disappear. Yeah, as I said, many people tell me, it's not, um, uh, it's uh, for your first general audience feature. You can go to see it with kids, whatever, but that it's the most terrifying one. Like, uh, in terms of content, is uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's the saddest one. Or uh... sometimes you you don't have ideas for a whole movie in your dreams, but uh, there are some motives that come in dreams that are like obsessions. That then when you make movies, you are probably keen to portray. But uh, yeah, uh, also sometimes as a film director, in your dreams, you're showing the editing of a movie to someone else. So I remember this one particular scene of Enter the Void that was inspired by a dream of me 
being in an editing room with a friend and say, I, I was showing him the, the last movie I did. And he said, oh, that's genius. How you edited that scene? It's, uh, it's great. And then when I woke up, I said, well, yeah, it was great how it looked <laughs> on, the, on the editing table. So I noted it. And then, yeah, it's a, the, it looks a lot like what I finally did at the end of Enter the Void with the camera getting into the belly of the, of the, um, the woman who gets um, uh, pregnant. Um, but yeah, dr dr dreams have a language that is quite close to some kind of surrealist movies. Um, mostly in dreams, you you don't have dialogues, or when there are dialogues, they're not synchronized. They're not synchronized with the mouths of the people involved in the dream. Uh, it's almost like a, uh, dreams are made of very short and telepathic dialogues, and. Uh, What's also weird is sometimes the, the characters change and in the middle of the dream, the person stays the same but has a different face. Or sometimes, you know, it's your father, but he doesn't look like your father, but you know it's your father. So the, 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 there's some kind of weird links that you could portray cinematically by changing the voices of the, of the comedians, uh, or no, of the actors who are playing. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's good to note uh, your dreams if you can, but uh, mostly if you don't write them down in the few minutes that follow uh, your, the, the moment you woke up, and then if one hour later you lost them forever. <laughs> uh, Salvador Dali had a, a good trick to note his dreams. He would put, um, he would have a spoon in his hand and uh, the moment he would fall asleep by taking, uh, when he was taking a nap, the spoon would fall and make a noise, and then he would wake up and he would note his dream. Uh, sometimes it is, sometimes it's just like watching a cheap imitation of reality. Well, 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 most movies look like theater plays, they don't look like real life. But uh, from time to time you see a movie that's abstract enough or playful enough to put you in, in, a, in another state of mind. Um, if, you, if you see uh, Eraserhead, the first movie by David Lynch, it really feels like a nightmare from the beginning to the end. It's in black and white. It's mostly silent, but with weird sounds. And yeah, and uh, discovering that movie, yeah, is like getting to someone else's uh, head and having a nightmare. Uh, yeah, it's a movie that feels like an intoxication. I'm not an artist, I'm a filmmaker from time to time. I earn money, I pay my rent with the money that uh, I'm given to direct movies. And uh, my father is an artist because he, he does paintings all by himself. Uh, I do movies with the crew, with, uh, with the actors or non-actors. And it's a collective work. You feel more like you're the, the captain of a, a football team. You try the matches to be funny. So to make that, you try to, yeah to enjoy the audience.